Well, hey guys, if I look like I'm on fire during this video, it's because I got a, I got a biggie mug of the steamy hot goodness. Welcome, in today's video, I am going to be talking about sunscreen allergies. Can you be allergic to your sunscreen? What do you do if you are allergic to your sunscreen? Is there an alternative? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist, coffee enthusiast. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. Can you be allergic to sunscreen? Absolutely. You can become allergic to pretty much any ingredient and in any skincare product out there that comes in contact with your skin. It's called allergic contact dermatitis. It is a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction in which after you come in contact uh, with a given ingredient in a product, uh, your immune system just kind of decides it doesn't like that ingredient and then uh, thereafter, anytime you are exposed to it again, you're gonna develop a rash wherever you put the ingredient, wherever it comes in contact. Now, when it comes to sunscreen, a lot of people comment that they are allergic to sunscreens. The actual active ingredient in sunscreens however, are truly an uncommon cause of contact dermatitis. It's not to say it doesn't happen, it's just not very common. But there definitely are sunscreen ingredients that are more commonly associated with contact dermatitis. There are actually two types of allergic contact dermatitis that you can get from sunscreen ingredients. We're gonna get a little bit more nuanced here, but it's actually really important in terms of the manifestation of how these things come about. You can have an actual allergic contact dermatitis in which you develop an allergy to a sunscreen ingredient, and anytime you come in contact with it, you develop a rash. Or you can develop this other type of contact dermatitis called a photoallergy. With a photoallergy, you put the product, the ingredient on your skin. You don't develop a rash. You only develop a rash when the skin is exposed to ultraviolet radiation. So you can put it all over your body, go out in long sleeves, and you're only gonna get a rash wherever the sun hits. Most commonly on like the face, um, you know, the backs of the hands if you're wearing just long sleeves. It'll typically spare the upper eyelids because you do get a little shade from your brows. Um, it's gonna spare the underside of the chin in that case. Allergic contact dermatitis presents as a, an itchy rash wherever you came in contact with that ingredient that you're allergic to. Or in the case of photo allergy, it's not only just where you came in contact with the ingredient, but also where you then we're exposed to UV, if that makes sense. So what ingredients in sunscreens are the most common culprits? I would say oxybenzone uh, is a common cause of both photo contact dermatitis as well as allergic contact dermatitis. So both types uh, can occur with oxybenzone. Fortunately, you know, in Europe, oxybenzone has been phased out of sunscreens for you know a long time. And here in the States, we are catching up and you're starting to see a lot of sunscreens labeled oxybenzone free. I'm a huge fan of this because it is, you know, more likely to cause problems for people and it's just not a great UV filter to begin with. So it's kind of being phased out, but I would say that is you know, one of the most common. Now, oxybenzone is part of a class of compounds called benzophenone. So, so if you have an allergy to benzophenones like oxybenzone, you have to be careful of more than just sunscreen because it is in a lot of other things. And it goes by some different names, of course. Nothing is ever straightforward. Diphenylketone, benzoyl, benzene, and phenylketone are some other names for benzophenones. Besides sunscreen, it's also found in perfume, soap, lip balm, nail polish, hairspray, hair dye, body and face washes, shampoos, and then in an industrial setting, you will come in contact with it and like paints and varnishes, uh, inks, and it, uh, certain adhesives and coatings. Then you also have avabenzone, another chemical ingredient that some people can be allergic to. Here in the States, if you're gonna buy a chemical sunscreen, it is not possible to avoid avabenzone. Avabenzone is what gives us good UVA protection and it's the only chemical filter we really have available here that blocks against that. Um, the alternative to a chemical sunscreen, of course, is a mineral sunscreen. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I will be mentioning some alternatives if you are um, you know, thinking that you are allergic to sunscreen. And then third is octocrylene. That is a UVB filter that is in chemical sunscreens as well as 
you know, what are called combination sunscreens, meaning they have zinc oxide and then a few chemical filters to block UVB. People can become allergic to octocrylon. It's not really that common, but it does happen. Truthfully, it seems very rare that people develop an allergy to an actual active ingredient in sunscreens. Now, of the active ingredients in sunscreens, you're not gonna develop an allergy to zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. That is what is in mineral-only sunscreen. So this is why when people say that they have problems with sunscreens, we always steer them towards the mineral sunscreens. You're not gonna develop an allergy to zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Why? It just sits on the surface of the skin. Your immune system doesn't have access to it to develop an allergy to it. Um, so that you know would be an alternative. All right, so that's the active ingredients in sunscreens that do cause allergy. Again, it's pretty rare, but it's not impossible. You can you know, develop an allergy and become sensitized to pretty much anything that comes in contact with your skin. And those are the sunscreen ingredients that most commonly do this. But let's dig a little bit deeper. What actually is more common is that you have either an allergy to or you are easily irritated by an inactive ingredient in the sunscreens. Common allergens in sunscreens include fragrance, Fragrance can be both an ordinary allergic contact dermatitis and it can also be a photo contact dermatitis, meaning you will develop rash uh, wherever you put it and that is also exposed to UV. This is why I encourage people to choose sunscreens that are free of fragrance just to you know, remove any additional uh, potential problem. Fragrance also can be irritating and uh, there are certain fragrance ingredients that can cause what's called a pigmented contact dermatitis, meaning you put it on the skin and it causes hyperpigmentation because of the, because of the fragrance ingredients. Um, also, it, when it comes to fragrance, a lot of people don't realize this, but essential oils are fragrance and essential oils are commonly, uh, common cause of contact dermatitis, both allergic, as well as photocontact dermatitis, and they can be an irritant as well. Uh, sandalwood is a common cause of photoallergic contact dermatitis, or it can cause that. So, you know, again, yet another reason to avoid both fragrance and or essential oils. I mean, to me, they are one and the same, but sometimes people don't realize that, and they think that they're using something that is free of, you know, artificial fragrance, not realizing that natural fragrance comes with the same risks. So certain emollients in the product, lanolin in particular, common allergen, castor oil, common allergen, and then the preservatives you can become allergic to. So you can see how it's not really possible to avoid all of these things and going out of your way to avoid all of this stuff, it doesn't like keep you safe or anything. But if you do have an, a problem with sunscreen, in the back of your mind, start really reading the ingredient lists of products and see if there's something that stands out to you that I'm mentioning here that you detect a pattern where anytime you are exposed to it, it causes problems. In most cases, it's not the actual active ingredients in sunscreens, it is the inactive ingredients. Another common cause of both allergic contact dermatitis and irritant contact dermatitis in sunscreens, as well as a variety of other products, is propylene glycol. It is a humectant, it's also a penetration enhancer, it does a lot of things in skincare products, and many people are, find that it is irritating. I'm gonna get into another type of reaction you can have, and that is an irritant contact dermatitis. This is a pretty broad category. Irritant contact dermatitis is not an allergy. It basically is just irritation that happens as a result of contact with an ingredient. And it is dependent on the concentration of the ingredient and kind of your skin's threshold for irritancy. People who have an impaired skin barrier, like people with eczema, or people who maybe have just had a chemical peel and their barrier is you know, more vulnerable, their, their threshold for irritation is much lower. So you have to factor that into, into place. Children also, they have a lower threshold for irritation. That is why we have a lot of you know, baby and children products, sunscreens marketed for babies and kids um, tend to be have fewer common irritants or potential irritants. But the thing about irritant contact dermatitis is it's not an allergy. Technically, it can happen to anybody. It's dependent, again, like I said, kind of on the overall concentration and the formulation of the product overall, and then sort of the state of that person's skin barrier, and then the type of exposure that they have to it um, also can make a difference. And the, t the, the body site. 
armpits, groin area, anywhere we have skin on skin contact, the risk of irritation goes up dramatically. Just because you have moisture and you have friction and you have occlusion, those things together really drive in irritation more commonly. Now in sunscreens, common uh, ingredients that may cause irritation, I already mentioned propylene glycol and fragrance. So fragrance as a reminder can cause allergic contact dermatitis, photoallergic contact dermatitis, and irritant contact dermatitis. Propylene glycol can cause both allergic contact dermatitis and irritant contact dermatitis. Um, then you have benzoic acid, sometimes pops up in sunscreens. H hydroxy acids can be irritating, like lactic acid, salicylic acid, glycolic acid. Anyways, but some people, you know, their, their threshold for irritation is so low that those things can cause burning, stinging. Also, anywhere they, the skin is more delicate, thin, like the eyelids. It is not uncommon for people to say, I don't mind the sunscreen, but I cannot tolerate it around my eyes. And that's a problem because you really need to be putting sunscreen around your eyes. And a lot of them do burn and sting, especially in my opinion, many of the chemical sunscreens from Neutrogena burn and sting around the eyes. So what do you do if you have all these problems with sunscreens and you're just not getting along with them? My number one tip is to choose a mineral sunscreen. Why? Well, it just sits on the surface of the skin and it's not something that your immune system is going to ever really see. You're not going to develop an allergy to zinc oxide. Zinc oxide provides nice broad spectrum UVB and UVA protection. Sometimes mineral sunscreens also have titanium dioxide in them as well, which is a good ingredient. Choose a mineral sunscreen, less likely to cause both irritation and zinc oxide is what's in barrier cream. So it actually helps, it acts as a skin protectant. And it also has anti-inflammatory properties. And so I would say choose a zinc oxide sunscreen. Now that doesn't mean that a zinc oxide sunscreen doesn't have other ingredients in it that you might be allergic to or sensitive to. So it doesn't completely remove the risk of burning, stinging, or rashes developing, but it definitely removes the culprit of a active sunscreen ingredient. You're not going to develop problems to zinc oxide. Yes, it can be a little dry. It can be drying for some people, but it's not like you're going to develop a, an actual rash to zinc oxide. But if you choose a zinc oxide sunscreen and it's still not cutting it for you, you still find that it burns, it stings, then Another thing to choose is a zinc oxide sunscreen marketed to ba for babies because those products, they're gonna have far fewer irritants, even less likely to burn or sting. And then the third thing you need to do is just kind of take a look at what am I doing in my day-to-day -day life, in my skincare routine, what am I being exposed to that perhaps has lowered my irritancy threshold and then things that come in contact with my skin such as sunscreens are just too irritating. Common things that do this, over cleansing. If you're washing your face multiple times a day that strips your moisture barrier makes you more likely to develop symptoms of irritation. A harsh cleanser, um, using too many exfoliating products too frequently. If you're using retinol or retinoids for the first time, you definitely are more likely to experience burning and stinging with other things coming in contact with the skin, including sunscreens. And do not forget about other things besides skincare products. We have this tendency um, to um, you know, assume that skincare products are either going to be the solution or they are the problem. But oftentimes there are so many other things going on in our life that actually contribute a lot to the state of our moisture barrier and how easily our skin is going to be irritated by things. Recently I did a video on things to avoid in the summer and I talked about medications that can make you sensitive to the sun. So that's going to make you even more sensitive to things coming in contact with the skin if you are on one of those medications. Um, you know, you go out in the sun and maybe, you know, you're putting sunscreen on and you're feeling burning and stinging, but really what it is is the medication that you're on. Um, that's making you more sensitive. Doxycycline, as a reminder, is a common one. Um, and I know a lot of you guys take that for either acne, rosacea, hydradenitis, uh, you know, what have you. Um, so that's a common, common offender. I'll put that list down below in the description box. Um, again, if you're taking St. John's wort, that is another common um, cause that can make you more sensitive to the sun. Uh, so that could be something else in your, in your routine. Lastly, how do you know if you are allergic to sunscreen? Best thing to do is to see a board certified dermatologist. I say this knowing that many of you guys 
you know, it's a challenge to, to get in to see one, but a good medical dermatologist should offer patch testing in their clinic to determine what you are actually allergic to. That's how we figure out if people have a, have an allergy uh, to an ingredient. And then we can easily counsel them on what products are free of that allergen. That's gonna be key moving forward. Likewise, there is a, another type of patch testing called photo patch testing. That should also be done, especially when we're talking about reactions to sunscreens, because as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can have a photo allergy. So just doing regular patch testing isn't gonna capture that type of allergy. It needs to be photo patch testing in which we use a UV lamp um, as part of the testing methodology. In the meantime, definitely still need to be wearing sunscreen. I suggest a mineral sunscreen and a, you know, a mineral sunscreen marketed for babies. Although obviously that's gonna leave a white cast. I know that is not desirable for everyone. You can also choose a tinted mineral sunscreen. Uh, being t the, the tints in mineral sunscreens come from iron oxides. That's not a cause of allergic contact dermatitis or irritant contact dermatitis. At least I've never encountered that or seen any reports of it in the medical literature or heard about it at any meetings. Um, so, you know, that's another option. For example, uh, one of my favorites is the CeraVe Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen. Check the description box. I will put a list of some of my favorite tinted mineral sunscreens from Derm Store that are currently on sale as well as this and some others. So check there for mineral sunscreens. But anyways, yeah, that would be, that would be kind of a step in the right direction is to just switch over to mineral sunscreens. You do still need to be wearing sunscreen. It's so important for reducing the damage from UV and for reducing your risk of skin cancer. But as I've said before, it's not a shield of armor. I also strongly encourage you to use sun protective clothing, long sleeves, hats, uh, and don't sunbathe. Don't stay out in the sun during you know, peak exposure hours, which tend to be midday. Uh, and you know, just be mindful of your sun exposure and go over your medication list with your doctor if you are taking medications. Uh, whether it be antidepressants, blood pressure medications, many of these things can make you more sensitive to the sun. And just having that knowledge really can empower you quite a bit. All right, guys, I hope this video is helpful in terms of outlining the different types of contact dermatitis that can occur with sunscreen, whether it be allergic contact dermatitis, photoallergic contact dermatitis, or an irritant dermatitis, and kind of guiding you as to how to navigate that. And you know, ideally you would see a board certified dermatologist for patch testing. Uh, in the meantime, I strongly suggest baby mineral sunscreens and sun protective clothing. Check the D box for some of my favorites. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.